You know, I heard somebody say recently that uh, taxonomy is like uh, religion and politics. A lot of people don't want to talk about it. So I figured we would talk about it. <laughs> Whew, it is hot, but uh, you know what? It doesn't matter because we're out here anyway. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Cactus Quest. I am your host, Hunter, as always, and I am, I'm here in Tucson with world famous botanist, author, plant explorer, sort of like a botanical Indiana Jones, if I may say so. We got Greg Starr. Now, uh, you guys uh, may have seen Greg. He was with me at Crucidra when we were in Oaxaca. In that video, we talked about agave oteroi. And Greg took a little bit of an issue with me saying agave oteroi, titanota, or whatever. So we're here today to get some clarity and go over the plant a little more in detail. As you may or may not know, Greg actually wrote the description along with... Tristan Davis. Okay, yeah, so Tristan, I invited him along on the paper. So yeah, Tristan and I described the gaviotaroi. And so with that being said, so we're gonna be looking at... We'll look at oteroi, titanota, and then three others that play into this story as well. Kerchovi, uh, convallus and dissimulans. Okay, agave oteroi for years was called FO76. Right. And that just refers to Felipe Otero, the FO, and his 76th seed collection. Not that he collected it in 1976, but it was his 76th seed collection. Okay. And the story that I heard is he hiked from uh, Tomeyin Canyon, which is in southern part of the Tehuacan Cuicatlan Valley, up toward what we now know as the Puente Calapa, the bridge at the Calapa River. Right. Or uh, what did uh, Garcia Mendoza had a different name for it, Rio Hondo. So I followed his name for it since he's a local. And along the way, he he collected seed of Oteroi. So years and years later, <clears throat> I was in the area with Joe Simcox, and we saw what I would call FO76. And then Joe took us to Agave, uh, the type locality of Agave Titanota at Rancho Tambor. Right. But when I got there, the Titanotas looked very different than the FO76 plants. <clears throat> right. They're very closely related, I would think. I mean, without DNA, um, my speculation is that they're that they would be sister species. Uh, as an old-time botanist, I would say yes, those are sister species. You're referring to Oteroi, Oteroi and Titanota. Oteroi are sister species. If we go back to the name of Agave Titanota, a lot of people on the internet and buying plants will call this plant right here Agave Titanota because that was their first introduction to the name Titanota. This to me would be FO76 or now I, um, described as agave oteroi. It is different in terms of its morphology than titanota. Okay. Now, like I said, I, I believe they're probably sister species, probably derived from a common ancestor. For the most part, their distributions are distinct. They occur in different habitats, different geography, uh, different soil types. But there are spots where the two become syntopic, where they grow together in the, the same, not just the same geographical region, the, which we would say they do in the Tehuacan Cuicalan Valley. Right, right there at Puente Calapa, right on the Puebla right. side. Right, but you throughout have. there, there's other places where they do Puente Lucia, a little bit farther away from there, uh, more to the south and to the west. You can also find the two growing together, but you can also find to throw the, a third one into the story is Agave Kerchovi growing with these two. Right. Okay. And I think that was one of the things that really threw me off when we were went to the type locality there at Puente Calapa at the uh -huh. Calapa Bridge uh, in, in northern Oaxaca is we hiked past a lot of this, which is Agave right. Kerchovi. Right. <clears throat> because there was a lot of plants that didn't quite look like Kerchovi. They looked, right. they had tendencies. But then another, this is one of the things that I really wanted to talk about with you actually is in regards to Oteroi is that, you know, the 
the trade, the people buying plants are accustomed to seeing that tight, that one, that's, you know, the clone of Otero, the, the, that, those kind of clones. Right. Super tight, really thick marginal um, teeth and all that kind of stuff. Right. That's not the, that's not, that's like a, you know, a, a standout thing that you would see in the field. It's a selection. It's yeah. a selection. Right. Man, that is the coolest thing. The teeth on these are absolutely vicious. So then when you see a lot of the Otero eyes in the field, they're gonna look more like this. They're gonna, they're gonna grow up, get a little bit bigger. The leaves are gonna stretch out a little bit more. Right. They're gonna have some different, uh, different phenotype as they get older. And, and I, you're going to see different phenotypes if you go to the whole uh, population. Now where, where you and Tony and Jeremy were trying to point out what you thought was the type locality for Oteroi, I don't believe that you actually got there. I think you circumnavigated the whole type locality. And I selected the type locality for Oteroi because at the time, that was the one spot that I knew that there's only this plant there. There are no Titanotas. We, we saw no, no Titanota. So to be clear, okay. that entire hike in, <clears throat> down to the river, uh -huh. All the way up, uh -huh. we didn't see any blue. So there, there plants. are a few Titanotas down along the Calapa or Rio Hondo on the south bank. There's some limestone that's in there, and you'll find a handful of plants in there. Well, we we ate sitting alongside the river down there. That entire side right there was completely covered in agaves. Right. Um, we couldn't really get very close to them, so I took like really high resolution photos uh -huh. so we could kind of zoom in and look at what it is. Right. I'd be curious to know. Okay. To me, I thought it looked it's more like Kerchovi, but then it, I'm also coming to it, just in, just to be clear, I'm coming to all this stuff with the agaves as a uh, collector who has bought agaves. You know, right. I'm like I, I, agaves, I love them and I love to go see them in habitat, but I'm just learning about them. Right. So in my mind, when I'm thinking Otero, I'm thinking the tight, you know, that right. fierce looking plant. But the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand, especially if they're growing them in small pots in their greenhouse or, you know, whatever, wherever they may be growing them. But if they're growing them in small pots, keeping that has a bonsaiing effect on the plant, right. which is keeping it small. Right. When they grow in the ground, in your garden or in nature, that super tight. It's gonna real, open up. It's gonna as, open up. And yeah. when it gets big, when it's getting close to maturity, you would not necessarily look at it and go, oh yeah, that was, originally this thing you see a, a you see the plant grow out of its juvenile form right okay tank nota doesn't seem to go through that juvenile mature stage whereas otero eye certainly does as a mature and so this plant. is otero eye that would be another form of otero eye right and this is also otero eye. correct this was an offset from one of the original fo76 forms from the late 80s Obviously, you described it, so you you certainly feel as though it it is deserving of of its individual species status. I I believe that Oteroi and Titanota are on their own individual evolutionary pathways. Which, okay, which to me would say they're a species. So the third the third fourth and fifth ones thrown into this whole story. Kerchovi, because you'll see Kerchovi growing with Titanota and Oteroi as well. Right. So, so, now, okay. um, so those two are, are hybridizing as well. Kerchovi. So this is Kerchovi. Correct. Is this is this related to Horida? In a sense, yeah, they're in the same section. Because so I'm looking at it, and I'm 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 having like uh, flashbacks to Green Bull. Right. And uh, you know, and Horida. Right. What, you know, I, I, I am not 100% clear, and I'm, I imagine if I'm not, there's probably a fair amount of people that are watching the, the video that are not super clear. Can you explain what the difference is between a subspecies and a variety? Oh boy, so <laughs> that goes way back. So when I was getting my degree in botany, um, I learned it as we had genus, species, subspecies, and then variety. And the subspecies at the time, I won't tell you when it was, 1980, um, that the subspecies were geographically separated. 
Okay. And varieties fell within those geographic within, within the locality separations. Or? So yeah, you would have, so one of the, the plants I was very interested in uh, are dahlias. Okay, so there was one that we have in Arizona, Dahlia versicolor. Okay. So I saw it down in uh, Sinaloa and Durango, Mexico in the early 80s. And it was Dahlia versicolor and then it had a subspecies and then a variety under that. Okay. Whereas the other subspecies of versicolor was, and I think is Occidentalis and I forget, it might have been versicolor versicolor over in the eastern part of Mexico. And then there were um, varieties within that. Okay. Nature rarely works that way. Most botanists have gone away from variety and are using subspecies. So I think we get the picture that, um, at least I know I sometimes do, when I'm looking at these things and I'm looking at a landscape or a habitat or plants in the habitat, mm -hmm. that that's like this like static thing. But it's not really, it's a snapshot of that moment it's right. mid evolution. Like these plants are still evolving. We're right. just witnessing like what's happening. You right. Know? There's no, th there's no end to this, to the speciation. So we're trying to find out how deep the water is, but we're in water that's falling down a waterfall, you know, like that's like, <laughs> okay, so let's so, go. Okay. So right back to Kerchovi. Right. So Gentry had a Gavi Kerchovi and he listed, uh, I believe he had five synonyms under Kerchovi. Okay. But we're only concerned with two of them right now. Agave convallis was one that William Trelease had described as it is uh, Agave dissimulans. Okay. So both of those got subsumed by Gentry into Agave Kerchovi. Dissimulans, convallis, Kerchovi. Kerchovi. Okay. Garcia Mendoza, when he did his paper on the agaves of the Tehuacan Cuicatlan Valley, he elevated convallus back to species level. Okay. But he then took the simulans. What was that based on? Anything in particular? Or was there some distribution that he, and a few, uh, some floral mor morphology and uh, vegetative morphology. Okay. So this whole, this whole section, the heterocanthi section of agaves, <clears throat> Gentry had, had commented about how the flower measurements were so similar throughout all the species that they are of very little value in dis determining species. Okay. Now, I agree with that uh, to some extent, and there's some things that, you know, these two are obviously closely related based on floral morphology. So here's the, uh, here's the flower of agave. Oteroi, still opening up, it looks like. But distribution, uh, phenotypic variation, you know, just the, the leaf variation, and combine that with uh, habitat and like soil. Tight note is only on limestone. This was on the sandstone, <clears throat> so not, not limestone. So two completely different well, the, the second place, that was limestone, wasn't it? Uh, no. No? <clears throat> no. It wasn't, it wasn't um, Cause the, uh, where exposed we got, limestone. <clears throat> the, where we got to where it was type locality, where we thought, whether it was or it wasn't, where we thought mm -hmm. we were at a type locality uh -huh. up at Puente Calapa, uh -huh. that was 100% for sure limestone. There's some limestone in the Calapa. And that was at the top, and those were the plants that looked like Oteroi. Was the yeah, ones- most of, Mostly, Oteroi is mostly down closer to the, to the river. Wait, that's Puente Calapa. Yeah. This is Puebla. Yeah. This is Oaxaca. Right. Okay, so look at the, the big woody section on the, on the back of the, the leaf here. Now, before you say anything, I just want to tell you, this, to me, I look at that, I go, yeah, ooh, wow, look at that beautiful Oteroi. Right. Right? The internet is going to look at that and go, wow, what a beautiful Oteroi. There is going to, this is Oh, now, the internet's going to call that Titanota. Well, no, the internet's going to call that either or. It's going to either be Titanota, Oteroi, FO76, which is why, by the way, that's why I referred to it that way in that video, because I'm talking to the internet. 
I thought that FO76 was the green Titan Oda. That's the way I had it in my mind. That's just the way I thought about it. This was long before I met you and uh, Jeremy and everybody. So this was just kind of like my initial way of thinking about it as just probably the pretty similar to how most people think about yeah. it, I would guess. Yeah. Because I'm kind of like, you know, a little lot like most collectors, I think. Right. In that sense. So yeah, if we look at this, I mean, look at the, the woody section here. Right. So that's typical or classic for Oteroi, that big woody section. Tight note, it, it's not that big. I mean, you'd have leaf tissue, live tissue, for almost all the way up to the base of the terminal spine there. Gotcha, okay. okay so that's one, one real kind of defining characteristic. It's, there's not one, one characteristic that says, this is Oteroi, this is Titanota. Right. It's a combination of that, plus a, the midstripe is more prevalent in Oteroi than you'll ever see in Titanota. It's the green color, it's the, the broadly obovate leaf shape for, uh, for Oteroi versus Titanota, which is more lance-shaped or, or right. ovate uh, lance. Right, right, right. So, obovate means? Short and uh, wider at the top than at the at the base. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so ob is just reverse. So ovate it tends to be egg shaped. If you put the egg, right. the fat part sure, of the sure. egg down. Yeah, right, right. Ob ovate is you take that egg and you flip it around. Okay. And you have the narrow part at the bottom and the the wider part at the top. Okay, gotcha. So okay. lanceolate versus ob lanceolate. It's just a reverse of. Okay. Okay. Lanceolate. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> Ones that were on the wall, uh -huh. those looked more like they had more lanceolate leaves. Now, the, here's the other tidbit: is that wall is like growing in the shade. It's like north facing right. wall. So yeah. So yeah, you have to take that into account too. Sun versus shade. Are, are you I, I straightened out now? Now I walk. <laughs> no, because now I walk back over here and I look at this thing. I'm like, so is the, what the difference between Kerchovi and what does Kerchovi look like when it's small? Kind of like this. This is a small Kerchovi. No, no, smaller. Smaller. Do you a little get... bit more dwarf. Not, not too much different than this. So the leaf shape is the big difference here. The leaf shape on Kerchovi, yes. Does that... it ever have an ob obovate? No, it's got a long triangular leaf shape to it. So it's widest at the base and a long taper to the tip. Okay. okay. And typically in habitat, Kerchovi lacks teeth in the upper roughly third of the leaf. Back to Kerchovi, Convalis, and Dissimulans. So Garcia Mendoza re-elevated this back up to species, but he put this, Dissimulans, into synonymy with this, instead of keeping it with Kerchovi. So he just merged these together? Well, these three were already merged together by Gentry. Right. So... He gave this its own species he gave this status? A, he, yeah, he brought this back to species status okay. based on Trelisa's description. And then pushed this into that. put this into there instead of putting it into here. Which it seems to, to me, seeing these in habitat, this fits a little bit more closely to Kerchovi yeah, okay. than so it does to here. Here's where the things, this is where it starts to like rattle my... So is this is this, this is right all, here? This is all Xylonacantha here. Xylonacantha. Yeah. How close are the populations of these things? Uh, this is Hidalgo, and this is um, what's in between there. So you got uh, Puebla in between Hidalgo. So not they're, super they're far. Not, they're not super far, but they're not super, super close, close either. either. Yeah, it's not like... Because, uh, I mean... It's not like one mountain This one's over. got more of like the, that little, like... You know, uh, it looks almost like some little with striping. It looks like some kind of camouflage. Or yeah, so it's got the the dashes like um, um, Lechugia has. This whole section has of agaves, the heterocanthi, which Gentry had called marginati, but um, heterocanthi has priority to it. That that name has priority. It's really exploded in speciation, especially down in Oaxaca okay. and southern Mexico, Oaxaca, Guerrero, um, Puebla. <clears throat> okay. Interesting. 
Yeah, because it seems like it's like they're all, you know, it's like a big family. It is. You know, and it's like, oh, well, that's, she married, you know, Bill, and, you know, Bill. So everyone looks, they say, shifting from center, you know, but like there's like something that's tying them you all together. You can tell they're all tied together, but there, there's a little bit of difference between them. Okay, so one. That's where it ends, right? One last thing. That's just, when we you, just got to figure those out. You'd mentioned, you called it in the field, you said, Agave tight nota oteroi. And one of our compatriots in the field said, well, it, it should just be a subspecies of tight nota. The issue with that is when once you make something a subspecies of something else, you're implying that oteroi is derived from tight nota. If you say tight nota subspecies oteroi, you're implying that it's derived from there. The only reason you would say it uh, subspecies, Titanota subspecies Oteroi, is because Titanota was named first. So it has what we call priority. So it has the first name. So it couldn't be, even though the, the derivation may be the opposite way, it could be Oteroi and then Titanota derived from those. Sure. Or it could just be that there was a common ancestor here, and then it split out, and then we have tight. Is it just as camera. likely that it could be that they are both common ancestors of like Krachovi or something? Or I mean, the reality of it is, is it even? It's 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 probably also <laughs> possible that they could be common ancestors of a plant that is no. That we don't it's no well, longer I, is that it would it make more sense that the common ancestor is, is gone now right and they're derived from that common ancestor all three all five of these could be derived from a common ancestor okay so you're so you i just i'm just to clarify because i think i'm i get what you're saying so you you feel that based on your research and what you've looked at your field work you feel that these are are related all of these are related from one common ancestor somewhere likely in the past I, I feel without, less likely than like than this these being these two are more closely related. I would call these two sister species. Right. Would I call these sister species? Maybe. The flowers might bear that out. These have red flowers. These have red flowers. These have red flowers. The measurements are just a little bit different. So yeah, they seem to be more aligned with each other than they are aligned with these. Okay. But because they're in the same section, this crosses with this, this crosses with this, this crosses with this. Now, will, and even will these cross this, as well? This is crossed with this. I found one plant where, or one spot in the Puente Lucia where there was Convallus, Kerchovi, Titanota, and Oteroi. So, one final Just thought. Just for here. clarification, right? <laughs> right. One final thought here. All right. If we're going to say Oteroi is the same as Titanota, right. based on them being able to hybridize, because these two can hybridize with this and with each other, then logic would tell me that this, this, and this are the same species. If, if you're saying, only if you're saying that because these two hybridize, they're the same species. Oh no, I'm certainly not saying. I mean, that. if that's if that's being said, yeah. if somebody believes that because these two species hybridize, I, I I don't I don't know. I haven't heard anyone say anything like that. Because I mean, you because you I have crosses of um, Pharaoh cag. I have a I have a Pharaohbergia, right? Which is already an intergenetic cross. If you believe Leuchtenbergia and Pharaoh cactus are distinct. Okay. So you, current are, current are you, DNA is saying that uh, feral cactus should be moved into most feral cactus should be moved into Leuchtenbergia. Really? Yeah. And I'm not all up on current DNA genetic research oh, of all. I'm not going to touch that right yeah, now. Then. We're, we're trying to get clarity here. We're trying to get clarity Forget on, it. on these. Yeah. Forget I mentioned Leuchtenbergia. Okay. 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 <laughs> all right. All right. So that was that your closing thought? <laughs> So my, my closing <laughs> thought is, I believe they're all on their own evolutionary pathways. Okay. And whether they're distinct species at this moment in time, they're on their way to being 
distinct species. So let's let's call them distinct species right okay. now. Okay, I'm good they're, with that. They're not going to go back to being one thing. Thank you guys for watching. Make <laughs> sure that you like, subscribe. Those are, that's kind of a uh, a uh, what's the word? A kind of a jarring wind chime. It is. I was expecting something a little more. Well, light. there used to be three more pipes on there, and there's a little bit more mellow at that point. But. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, pardon the pardon the heavy metal wind chimes. Make sure you like, subscribe, post it in your favorite message board if you can. Become a Patreon supporter. Anyway, thank you guys. Peace.